episode nine. And after the eye scorching nightmare of last time, we're taking a more literal approach this time as you'll watch a grown man go gaga over a kid's TV show from his youth. And before that, a handy lesson in how size isn't necessarily everything. Now, usually I'd get someone else to say those two words to kick us off, but there's not really anyone around, so, um... Roll titles! Oh, this light is terrifying, isn't it? One of the most unpredictable things in comedy is audience numbers. Live entertainment is a fickle business at the best of times. It's really tough to get an audience for comedy. Whenever I've played this club before, it's been really nice, like 50 or so people. Tonight, however, slightly different. Uh, am I standing outside in the rain? Definitely. <laughs> the very bespoke intro to the show. We met everyone. What happened? Did you get caught in the massive queue to get in? Was there a, you were just got crushed in the jazz crush next door. When April sprinkles her dreams in the I often meet comedians and performers who say things like the best show I ever did was to two people at the Edinburgh Fringe. And I don't trust those people, but I will say this, seven became nine and became seven again due to two people having to leave because they had a babysitter. But it was actually a really nice night. They're all good, they're all good kids. We had a fun show. Like me, were once a child. I just wanna fuck bad bitches. I imagine you have very fond memories of the kids' TV shows from back then. I remember running home from school on a weekly basis to watch one show in particular. That show was called Nightmare. <laughs> How to describe it to a 2016 audience. Welcome, watchers of illusion, to the castle of confusion. Essentially, it involved a bunch of school kids, an imaginary computer-generated dungeon, and a man called Treyguard. Now that we have the next victims, <laughs> I mean, team, we can commence. In a world of Oculus Rift and VR on your phones, it is a joy to behold. Rock to rock and stone to stone, span the pit and cross the zone. 
Now bring it to me, boy. Basically, one of the kids wore a helmet so he couldn't see, and the other three had to guide him round a computer-generated dungeon, solving puzzles and avoiding getting killed by orcs and wizards and giant scorpions and fire and stuff. It was amazing. Three riddles have I, and truth is what I seek. A few years ago in Edinburgh, some friends of mine put on a show called Nightmare Live, which was like a recreation of this old TV show. After several successful years, they are now performing it at the Udderbelly on South Bank, which is a huge venue, and I am taking part. I'm literally so excited, it's ridiculous. <laughs> as it is here at the Underbelly, it does remind me a little bit of the Edinburgh Fringe and therefore feels slightly sick. I used to say I was sincere. It's happening. I'm heading backstage. A lot of the glamour wears off immediately when you get to this backstage area. I'm very aware that I don't want to spoil any of this for anyone, so I will, if there's anything you shouldn't see, I will blur it out. I think you're mainly just going to see my face being very excitable. Oh god. Paul Flannery! Oh, hey Simon Fielder, how are you? Soames! Oh my god, look, it's everyone! Hello! Spoilers! I used to say, I was this, this is the venue. No one's in it yet. Very exciting. I'm 38. <laughs> By the way, this is Barry. He's also going to be guiding the dungeon here with me. Oh God, I'm so scared. Yeah, the biggest change for for you this year is that there's no there's no safety catches. So you you there's multiple dungeoners. We can, We'll, you know, so we can just die? They can, you can just die. Pretty uh, standard backstage area, mirror, lamp, kettle. Helmet of justice! Justice, of course, is blind. And when you don this helmet, you also become blind. <laughs> this is Keith. He is the dungeoneer who's going to put the helmet on. How familiar are you with Nightmare? I'd say fairly familiar. I've been the editor for Nightmare.com for just around 10 years now. Yes! We are going to smash this dungeon. Smash this dungeon. Please don't die really quickly. Well, is that copyrighted? Can I have that in the video? So, Traeger, you found out about the prophecies. Response. <laughs> Here's a stranger. <laughs> Name yourselves. Uh, Barry. Barry and Simon. A team. You are guiding the chosen one. The prophecy is in your hands now. Um. Oh. Extreme warning, team. Um. There's a big knight this? walking. Uh, yeah. Turn 90 degrees to your right. <laughs> your uh, other right. Sorry, Keith, did you travel far for this? <laughs> it was shit, I deep dark. <laughs> I'm horrible. <laughs> like the government. Take five steps forwards. <laughs> I cash in on 90s nostalgia with a stage show. <laughs> what do you think, audience? <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> Turn 90 degrees to your right. Run fast forward. Run forward. Run forward. Run forward. Run forward. Run forward. Run forward. I'm so sorry. It was terrifying. <laughs> the chosen one, Chris. We won. We won. We won. We won. <laughs> won. Unbelievable. To the Well, 
that was Nightmare Live. What an absolute treat. I mean, if you are a person, probably in your 30s, who enjoyed that as a kid, you owe it to yourself to come to the South Bank and see that. We won! <laughs> um, if, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe. Uh, you can watch the other video somewhere on the screen here. Um, what's a, what did they say at the end of Nightmare? It's only a documentary show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Okay, someone direct me out. Side step left, side step left, do the robot. Do the, excellent, excellent.